Welcome to the Prosperity Rx Podcast. This is pharmacist Keith Abel with your prescription for prosperity. This is a podcast where I give you hope. I show you the path toward building a life of peace and prosperity, to build a life that you don't need a vacation from. Let me ask you, what's the difference between being broke and being poor? Well, it's two different ways of looking at the same situation. No money. Poor is an attitude. It says you can't get ahead and you'll never win with money. Just stay right where you are and sulk in your bad luck forever. Now, broke, on the other hand, is something you're just passing through. Folks, we've all messed up by believing some of the prevailing money myths in our culture. The turning point in your life comes, however, when you're willing to own up, claw your way out, and never live in the lie again. I'll be sharing concepts that I've learned from folks like Dave Ramsey, Robert Kiyosaki, Art Williams, W. Clement Stone, Brenda Burchard, Napoleon Hill, Zig Ziglar, and many other folks. Concepts that I've learned and successfully implemented in my life. These concepts will help you move from having the attitude that you'll never get ahead, that you'll never win with money, the mentality of you're doomed, you're stuck right where you are, and you're sulking in that bad luck forever. These concepts and ideas will help you move toward how you can claw your way out, to move you away from having to live that lie of being poor and hopeless. If you're willing to own up to it, to accept that you do have the power to change your circumstances and that you're willing to do what it takes, then this podcast is for you. You truly can change your life and start on the true path toward financial peace and prosperity. W. Clement Stone in his book, The Success System That Never Fails, said, If you cannot save money, the seed of success is not in you. So let's get on with the show. In our last episode, we talked about the excuse, but I just can't save. So today, let's take a look at the excuse that cars are the exception for debt. Two of the most common myths about cars and debt that folks have include the idea that old cars just aren't as safe and buying used is just inheriting someone else's problems. Buying a car is a big financial decision, and it's one that you shouldn't rush through over the course of a weekend. It's got everything to do with where you are in your financial plan. I've been buying used cars now for 20 years without any problems. Uh, the last car that I bought was in 2013 when I paid cash for a Cadillac CTS. Five years later now, and I've got over 200,000 miles on that car, and I still absolutely love it. So the key is to start your research with these 10 car buying tips and it'll help you find an affordable car that also fits your lifestyle. So of course the first tip is you got to figure out you know what kind of car you can afford in your budget. Let's start with a a bit of a reality check. New cars drop in value like a bag of rocks losing 60 percent of their value in the first five years. That's not a smart investment you really should only consider buying new if you've got plenty of money to burn. Now with that out of the way, your first step is deciding what you can afford to pay for your car. Leasing a car and going into debt to buy one are both bad ideas. So what you can afford is based on the amount of cash that you can pay up front. If you don't have the funds for a a used car or a certified pre-owned car right away, You've got to make room in your budget to set the money aside each and every month. You know, figure out where in your budget you can get by on less and then how much you can afford to put put away towards your car. Remember, leasing or financing a car will not help you build wealth. It's much easier to save $500 a month, the average car payment, for about 10 months and then go out and buy a used car with no strings attached. Do you really want to sign up for a payment plan and pay thousands of extra dollars for several years? In fact, I can show you the method that I used to generate more income so I could pay cash for that Cadillac CTS. You know, my my Malibu was on its last leg, so I had to come up with the cash to do it. And I can show you how we did that. We did it by starting a home-based business. And I can show you how you can start your own home-based business with no upfront investments. No pyramids that require monthly auto shipments that cost you money every month instead of creating money. And no selling lotions or potions or pills or some magic juice or, or a quick magic diet aid that melts away inches and minutes and all those other scam promotions we see all over Facebook and our social media every day. 
Stay tuned to the end and I'll share with you more on, on how you can learn how to do that. So now the second step is to narrow down your choices. Once you've decided on a price, you want to start looking at cars that fit your budget. Now there are plenty of ways to find used cars in your area. Uh, your local dealership likely has a website for you where you can view cars that they have in the inventory. You can also do like I did when I bought that Cadillac, I went to Craigslist. Uh, you want to check sites like Craigslist to, to see what other kind of cars are on the market. You know, then you want to narrow down your options to a, a few cars that fit your price range and that fit the needs that you have. Uh, consider factors such as safety, speed, gas mileage, comfort, uh, how many people it holds, and how it handles in bad weather. Just because something's a good fit for your wallet doesn't mean it's going to work for your lifestyle. And if a car you love is a little bit over your budget, go ahead and include it on your list. As a cash buyer, you'll oftentimes have the power to negotiate a better price. So number three, do your research before buying a car. When you find a car you like, it's time to do some research. Uh, look up the Kelly Blue Book value of the vehicle to make sure the price is fair and, you know, for that particular year and model and, and the options that it has. You should also check each vehicle's history report. Uh, this will let you know the accident histories and, and the repair information, uh, any potential recalls, and other important information about the car. Uh, you can visit, uh, you, you simply need to uh, request the vehicle identification number from the seller and then use a website like uh, vehiclehistory.com or carfax.com to research the car's history. That's what I've done with the cars that I've bought in the past. Uh, some sites charge for the information they provide and, you know, the paid reports are more comprehensive. Uh, in most cases, the free reports alert you to any major red flags. Um, you know, some car dealerships or private sellers will also provide a report for you if, if you ask. Either way, it's worth a check. If you get a good deal but end up in the shop every week for maintenance, you'll spend more money in the long run. Number four, you want to get a car insurance quote. By now, you've, you've narrowed down to a handful of potential cars and you've checked out their history and everything, they fit in your budget, but it's not good enough uh, to be able to pay cash for a car and then not be able to afford the insurance. So you also need to make sure that you can pay for that insurance that's going to come in for that car. Uh, you want to talk to your current insurance agent about writing a few quotes for the cars that, you have, that you've got in mind. If the price is too steep on the insurance, don't be afraid to consult an independent agent to, to get some more quotes. Uh, but then again, if the price on that insurance is too high, you might want to consider a different car. Uh, online insurance quote generators can help. You know, they'll get you a ballpark idea whether it's going to be expensive or not. But you'll get a better deal by actually talking to an insurance agent on the phone or in person. You might even be eligible for discounts that you don't know exist when you're looking it up online. Now, for the fun part, number five, take the car for a test drive know exactly what you want before you even step foot in a dealership and keep an eye out for their upselling tactics. If the dealership doesn't have the car you want but has a budget breaking similar model with a, a brand new sound system and heated seats, it's still not the right car for you. Once you're ready to get behind the wheel for your test drive, choose a route that allows you to experience different types of driving. Uh, the way a car handles on the highway is going to be different than how it handles in the city driving. So pay attention to anything that seems odd. Does the car rattle when you go over a bump? Are there any weird noises? Uh, does the steering feel weird when you turn? You know, these kind of things. These are details that will help you out in the, uh, in the next step. And this next step is you know, a very important one. Uh, it's something I do all the time. I get a car inspection. You know, before I spend a dollar on the used car, I take it to the mechanic for a full inspection. Uh, sellers can lie when there's, there's money on the line. While the car might look and feel fine when you take it around the block, you never know what could be going on under the hood. And don't feel awkward about asking for an inspection. This is a routine part of the car buying process. If the seller hesitates or gets upset about your request, they probably got something to hide. You might want to stay away from that car. Number seven, wait for the best time to, call, to buy a car. According to Auto Trader, the best time to buy a car is at the end of the month or during a holiday weekend uh, and uh, at the end of a quarter. So you want to plan some time around March, June, September, and December. 
uh, the U United States uh, uh, United Services Automobile Association recommends going later in the day and during the week to get an even better deal. Dealerships are usually hoping to, to reach their year-end goals, which motivates them to slash prices and move cars before the end of the year. Uh, and during the late summer, a lot of dealerships want to sell as many cars as possible so they can clear space for the new, new inventory. Again, you want to go later in the month to ensure that you're getting the best price possible. It may seem, seem like a, a simple tip, but buying a car uh, and waiting for the right time to buy it can save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars on the final sale. You know, when my daughter went to pay, buy her car that she paid cash for, uh, she went towards the end of the day when they were almost closed and uh, she went, this was uh, in the winter time and we've had, had you know, a couple weeks of really bad weather and you know, the, the car dealership was eager to sell that car because they hadn't had a sell in a couple weeks. So she got a really good deal on that. Number eight, always negotiate. You're at the advantage here for two reasons. You've done your research and you're paying cash. Give the seller a price that you're willing to pay for the car. This price should be lower than what you're actually willing to pay so there's a little bit of room for you and the seller to meet in the middle. Uh, Negotiation is all about the attitude. You have to act like you're willing to walk away if, you know, from, the, from the seller if they don't want to come down to your price. If a dealer senses for even a second that you really want a, car, a certain car, you're not going to get a good idea. It also helps to see if a, another third party or dealership is selling the same car for a better price and then bring that information to the table. If you can get a deal from one seller and take that dollar amount to another seller, they may come down on the cost. If you pay with cash on top of that, you can get a really good deal. And again, that's something my daughter did when she bought her car. You know, it was her very first car. She had the cash in hand. She knew exactly what she wanted. She told the dealer what she wanted. When the dealer tried to shenanigan her into higher prices, she walked away. He called her back to the room four times and she finally got the deal that she wanted for the price that she wanted. So number nine, forget the extras. Don't pay for things that you don't really need, like a racing stripe or some special detailing, and especially the extended warranties. A warranty is not necessary. If you've done your, your, your uh, inspections and if you have a fully funded emergency fund, you don't need the warranty. That alone will cover any cost that you have if the car breaks down or has problems. You'll be able to put that uh, money you would have spent in the, on the warranty, add that to your emergency fund, and you have your fully funded emergency fund there. So if you, if you played your cards right and you uh, followed all the steps and did all the research and everything, you shouldn't need the warranty. Now, if you change your mind and you want to purchase extras for the car down the line, you can always contact a dealership to negotiate a price for the extras. And again, have cash. That always makes for a better negotiation. That gives you time to decide which extras that you really want to add and which would just be a luxury. And number 10, this one's really important. Two are better than one. If you need support when you're ready to buy a car, take a friend or family member who can steer you in the right direction. They can also help you remember the details about that car and, and about the seller, the things that the seller tells you. And that will help you make up your mind later on as you're thinking about different cars. And bring someone who knows a lot about cars if you don't have any experience with cars and, and any experience with negotiating. So you want to bring someone with you that can uh, be your advocate. And also by bringing someone with you, you know, you let them know what the, what the you know, price is that you're willing to pay and, and where, what range you're willing to stay in, they can help you uh, stay in that price range as well. And a bonus car buying tip, cars don't equal happiness. Remember, the purpose of a vehicle is to get you from point A to point B, not to prove your social status to the world. As tempting as it is to hit the road in a car you can't afford, it's more likely to be a burden than a blessing, especially if it's not in your budget. Chances are your car isn't the first thing that you think about in the morning or when you go to bed at night. The key to happiness is not a new car, so don't pay for it like it is. What tips do you have for buying a used car? Leave a comment below and let me know what your best tips are for buying a used car. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and that you learned some valuable information. Now's the best time to start taking control of your money. I'll be covering 
many topics in this video blog to teach and encourage saving and debt freedom. Uh, so be sure to subscribe to this podcast and subscribe to my blog at prosperityrx.com uh, to learn more to how to save money, uh, to learn more on how to make a budget, pay off your debt, reduce your taxes, and invest for your future. And if you found value in the information that I'm sharing on this video blog, on my podcast, and in my uh, written blog, then, then like it and share it with others. Also, if you want to learn more about how to create extra income by starting a home business that requires no startup capital, no pyramid that requires a monthly auto shipment that costs you money every month instead of creating money, and no selling of lotions and potions and pills and the quick, uh, the, the magic uh, juices or some quick magic diet aid that melts away inches and minutes or other such scam promotions that you see all over your social media, then visit my website, aim high for success.com A-I-M-H-I-G-H-F-O-R-S-U-C-C-E-S-S dot com. Jim Rohn once said, In the process of living, the winds of circumstances blow on all of us in an unending flow that touches each of our lives. What guides us to different destinations in life is determined by the way we have chosen to set our sails. The way that each of us thinks makes the major difference in where each of us arrive. The major difference is in the set of the sail. The same circumstances happen to all of us. We have disappointments and challenges. We all have reversals and there are those moments when in spite of the best plans and efforts things just seem to fall apart. In the final analysis it's not what happens that determines the quality of our lives. It's what we choose to do when we have struggled to set the sail and then discover, after all of our efforts, that the wind has changed direction. When the wind change, we must change. We must struggle to our feet once more and reset the sail in the manner that will steer us toward the destination of our own deliberate choosing. The set of the sail, how we think, how we respond, has far greater capacity to destroy our lives than any challenges we face. How quickly and responsibly react, we react to adversity is far more important than the adversity itself. Once we discipline ourselves to understand this, we'll finally and willingly conclude that the great challenge of life is to control the process of our thinking. Learning to reset the cell with the changing winds rather than permitting ourselves to be blown in a direction that we did not purposely choose requires the development of a whole new discipline. It involves going to work on establishing a powerful personal philosophy that will help to influence in a positive way all that we do and that we think and that we decide. If we can succeed in this worthy endeavor, the result will be a change in the course of our income, our lifestyle, our relationships, and how we feel about the things of value as well as the times of challenge. If we can alter the way we perceive judge and decide upon the main issues of our life, then we can dramatically change our lives. Set yourself for prosperity, get out of debt, create additional streams of income, and live life to its fullest. That's your prescription for prosperity. Start today.